guys, it's Leah and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about American Horror Story 1984. If you guys have been following me since last year, you know I usually do episode by episode recap. If anybody's interested in catching up or if you're binging Apocalypse right now, go watch my episode recaps for that season. Of course, we are already in episode four of 1984. So could you imagine if it was 1985 and I just keep saying 1984? Pretty sure it's 1984. Anyway, we are already on to episode four, so of course I didn't do a recap for episodes one, two, three, and four, but I feel as though that's kind of okay. Hear me out real quick, just because the season is really starting to pick up. Episodes one through three were kind of a little jumbled, not to say that they were bad, but that's just why I didn't do a recap. So now I'm going to talk about my overall thoughts, where I think they're going, and some questions that this latest episode left me with. Real quick before we get started, if you guys haven't subscribed, already please make sure to subscribe down below don't even really know if it's in this corner still haven't figured it out bad at my job sorry but thank you guys also so much for the positive feedback on my last video the first video that I made in almost three months I appreciate you guys so much I will be lurking around in the comments below on that video again but anyway let's start talking about American Horror Story if you are not watching it or if you are not caught up to episode four there are definitely spoilers ahead so only can continue if you don't care if you're living your life with spoilers and you just got you know you just don't care about that but don't come at me for spoiling something um because this is my disclaimer but episode four kind of cleared the air for a lot of different plot twists that they had going at once from episode one through three so just a slight thing episodes one and two definitely established a lot of information and a lot of plot twists very early on after episode one and two I was left slightly confused uh, and how they were going to continue the entire season but we definitely got our answers and well we didn't really get answers I guess we got answers with more questions or we were answered with questions I don't know so basically what had been happening was Mr. Jingles who was this crazy serial killer supposedly uh they had us believe was released from an asylum then we found out that he wasn't he didn't escape on his own part of the redwood counseling group aka the nurse she's not actually a nurse apparently according to american horror story but she is actually a psychologist she released jingles and wants to see him killing in action Okay, so we had that much. Then we had another killer called the Night Stalker um, who was killing, uh, trying to find, I don't even remember her name, but he was stalking the main character for whatever reason. They didn't even tell us until episode four. Um, and so then we had two killers on the loose in this one campsite right before the first day of camp was supposed to start. Weird, crazy, all right, fine. Sort of following that, um, then we have a group of 20-somethings that are all on the run. It's perfect, campy, 80s horror, which I think that they, let me just say now, I don't know how the rest of the season is going to go, but thus far, I think that they've captured the essence of campy 80s horror films, and that's why I love this so much, besides the fact that I feel like Ryan Murphy just wanted to play his favorite 80s songs, but anyway... Besides that, I thought it was going really well. I thought that they captured the gore, even though they straight out went out the gate, like, running with it. They didn't even hold back, which, all right, that's American Horror Story that we usually are used to. Doesn't hold back. Now, concerning Episodes 4 recap, we find out that Montana actually knew the Night Stalker, and this increases the connections that are there, apparently, because she wants... Now I can't remember the girl's name, and this is, like, so dumb, but... No, I'm not going to remember it. But anyway, Montana hooks up with the Night Stalker and sets the Night Stalker on killing this girl who's the main character. And for whatever reason, her name is just not important to me right now. I'll like put it on the screen somewhere. But anyway, sets her on there for killing her brother, which apparently like she was marrying this guy and her brother was the best man. And then the guy at the wedding turns around and shoots the best man for sleeping with her, which we don't even know if that's actually true yet. But anyway, the brother that got shot and died was actually Montana's brother. So she blames this girl for killing her brother and wants the night stalker to kill her. Besides being weirdly attracted to him because he murdered somebody for her. 
okay so that's happening and then perhaps the biggest reveal that episode four gave us was that mr jingles was not actually a murderer he was falsely accused and set up and made to believe that he was a murderer which i mean he, now that he's out he's still killing people so um <laughs> still a murderer but not the murderer that we thought that he was if that makes any sense so now I'm very curious. I don't know where they're going to go about this. Mr. Jingles and the Night nice Stalker had this crazy, almost like Freddy versus Jason, like standoff in the middle of the woods. Um, long story short, the Night Stalker was dead, but he's been resurrected by Satan, which I'm very curious about. Like, I really want to know how they're going to tie this in because up until this moment, they were doing campy 80s horror, but it was like realistic can't be 80s horror meaning like yeah this could happen in some crazy woodsy area maybe um until all of a sudden they brought the supernatural into this with the night stalker being dead and then resurrected by satan um so i hope that they explain that a little bit more instead of just slapping a band-aid on it and saying satan satan did it yay um because i can kind of see american horror story using that especially after apocalypse to just kind of explain away things that they want to explain so i don't know where that's gonna go I also wonder if there's going to be more plot twists because at this point they've created a divide that the other characters in the show don't know about. People are playing both sides. Rita is still pretending. Montana's still pretending. Um, so it's pretty interesting. I do like this because it's like, who can you trust? Thus far, we only have three people on the show that are innocent that we know of. So I wonder if they're just going to keep proving that everybody on the show is not innocent or if we're actually going to stay with these three people um it's pretty interesting i really do like the thriller aspects of course it's super gory i do wonder where they're gonna go with this we're only on episode four i felt though as though after episode two it could have just ended like it was really weird the way that they started off they just kind of like pushed you into it but whatever i'm actually enjoying this season i don't want to jinx it but i'm actually really enjoying this season um it's definitely not not really like a letdown. I know when I watched Cult, I think that I reviewed that season two years ago. I liked Cult, but it wasn't the American Horror Story that I wanted. Now I'm rambling. So that's going to be today's recap. What do you guys think is going to happen? If you guys have watched it, comment down below. More plot twists. What are they going to do with Jingles? What about the Night Stalker? How do you think they're going to explain that? Make sure you let me know down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. So glad again to be back. I know it's only my second video, but I'm so glad to be back. Um, make sure you stay tuned for more videos, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.